All right, so you can share your screen with us anytime now. Okay, do you see my screen? Mm, not yet. Okay, it's coming. All right, we can see your screen now. Okay, so just to confirm, the first one will be overset meshes, no? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so, okay, I think I am ready. We are ready for you. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. So this first presentation will be about overset meshes in OpenFun. Okay, so I will give you some developments, what is going on there and how we can use it. So, so first, yeah, just let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Joel Guerrero and I uh, work at the Research at the University of Genoa, but also in the city of Wolf Dynamics. And basically I work with CFD, but also lately I've been doing some data visualization, big data, machine learning. And also, let me introduce also what is who is Wolf Dynamic. This is a spin-off that we created here at the University of Genoa. So just to fill a gap between industry and academia. So what we do is work with small, medium, and enterprise industries to to help them to become more agile, and innovative. So the, the sense that the most uh, difficult application so far that we have is coming for for SME. Also, we work with large enterprise, so those are big companies that are more curious about what is this open source technology or doing validation. And we also offer some training services. So if you are interested in some training, just look at uh, our website. So let me talk a little bit. Uh, our presentation will be just the grammar of overset meshes. So it's just in five chapters. So first. Uh, I feel composed that I have to talk about an overview of overset meshes for those who doesn't know then how everything is set up in OpenFun and then I'm going to show you some applications and guidelines. So just for those who doesn't have idea what is overset meshes, so basically overset meshes consists in generating a set of component meshes, okay? It can be a structure, and structure, whatever you want that covers the whole domain and then they overlap where they meet. Okay, so you can see that it's very flexible because if you are doing parametrical studies, for instance, you can create many uh, different meshes, you put it together in the domain, and then somehow you need to interpolate, communicate that solution. But also it's very efficient as you are dealing with moving bodies. So <clears throat> the domain connectivity, when you have the meshes, then is done through proper interpolation. So besides the interpolation that we have in the finite volume or finite different method, whatever you are using, you will have another interpolation between different component measures. So it's important that this interpolation is not conservative, but by following good practices, you can minimize you know, those interpolation errors. Uh, for your knowledge also, is that overset meshes is also known as over overlapping grids, overset composite grids, composite overlap meshes, chimera meshes. So it's not by, by many names, but I will refer to them as overset meshes. Uh, the method has been around for uh, quite some time. Okay, it's not something new that five, 10 years now, it has been since the eighties. Okay, and also uh, uh, regarding moving meshes, that is what is making it more flexible, more useful, is that you just put a body here and then this body will start to move and simply every single time step you will compute this interpolation. You see that you have this interpolation in fringe. Each time that the component mesh is moving, you recompute and then you keep going. So you can have multiple bodies in motion. Uh, the, the motion can be just prescribed, can be fluid structure interaction, deformation, whatever. There is no limitation. And this is the biggest advantage of using this method. Uh, <clears throat> they can even handle collisions so far in OpenFun. It's not implemented, but there are a few other libraries that you can handle co co collision, which is even even much better. And the thing is that uh, overset meshes guarantees you high quality meshes, even for large display, because you can you can deal with moving bodies using mesh uh, Laplacian smoothing, but when you have large deformation, there is always a limitation. Okay, so if you have those kinds of problems, I think the, the, way, the way to go is overset mesh. If your displacement are small, uh, don't pay the extra 
complication of all overset meshes. Don't go for this one. Just go stay with your smoothing or even remeshing. Uh, here, just a few uh, the development timelines. So just to show you that since the 60s, it was studied. Then in the late 70s, it was developed. Okay, and then it is introduced in the CFD community in the early 80s. So a lot of work here, all these guys coming from NASA. Okay, then in the 90s, more development now working with moving bodies. So this early development is just to simplify, uh, simplify the generations measures. So at that time, everything was fine at different and structured measures. So thanks to using overset measures, everything was simplified. Then going to moving measures, then we go into 2000. So here, instructor measures start to gain popularity. And we see here the timeline also move with uh, computational power. And that's just today, most of the software, commercial software, have overset meshes, but also many overset uh, open source research frameworks. Uh, just also something interesting is that there is this symposium on overset meshes, and since, since 92 it is going on. So as you see, it's not new, it has been, <clears throat> has been the, uh, out there for a really long time. A few of the libraries that there are there so we're going to focus in open phone the one developed by esi okay so i'm going to talk about this one but have in mind that for an extent have a library then there are all of this one this two that the two the last two relies in a commercial uh library but there are many uh frameworks as you can see um well just a couple of applications so see that the flexibility of overset meshes that here for instance we have the the v22 osprey so here you can simulate the tilt rotor but also this rotor had the blade has pitch motion and rotating so doing this using typical sliding, sliding meshes is not it's not an easy task so here is where overset meshes go in hand and also the space shuttle for instance you want to simulate the uh, rocket booster everything can be done also here you have debris okay so as you recall that accident so everything has been simulated using overset meshes so these are the challenging problems that we want to deal with overset mesh. If you are doing easy problems like honestly steady bodies that are not moving or a small displacement, don't pay the extra complications. If you have something very complicated, yes, overset meshes are handy. So uh, overset meshes in open phone. So the, the to set up a case to assemble a mesh is very straightforward. Okay. I have to say that it's extremely simpler, similar to what you find in commercial software. So the basic steps are you need to generate your component meshes, okay, and then you merge them together. This you can use any software, block meshes, not the or external uh, measure. Then you define overset patches, boundary conditions. So there is a very specific boundary condition where you need to interpolate, you need to define that one. Assign zones, something about grid priority, so how you want to interpolate, and then the the stencils okay are computed automatically by the solver so these are the four basic steps and this is how everything go, uh, uh, happens so let's see that we have this uh case okay so we have three component meshes background refinement zone and then the mesh around our cylinder so you just generate it so i guess you know the data structure of uh, open phone so you have different folders so it, for each different mesh you have different folders, you generate the mesh, then you merge these two meshes into the folder all, okay? So there will be one that will take everything, and then in all, you will have all those meshes all together, okay? So this is a straightforward, but you need to create all this data structure. So after you merge the meshes, you go and you define overset patches, okay? So probably this can be already defined when you generate the mesh or afterwards, but basically we say in this region here, you interpolate the solution here also you interpolate the solutions okay so besides inlet outlet wall front back whatever entity you will have this too so you interpol uh, you define those one then you define the zone id okay so see that we have three sums okay so each component uh mesh will have a different index value so see that sum zero sum one and sum two and the order is important okay so usually sum zero will be the background mesh, okay, the mesh where you have inlets and outlets. And then you give numbers to the other ones, and according to that number, you will have lower or higher priority. We will see later what is that about. So then we uh, compute the stances. This is remain, this is done by the solver after you assemble everything. So the stances basically are this. So see that the solver will find 
whole song. So whole songs are songs where we don't compute the solution. Okay. So see that we have a hole here, then we have interpolation areas, and then we have calculated. So where you have this light blue, everything is computed. Then as the solution goes from here to the other mesh, you interpolate and so on. Okay. So this is the method. So here probably we see better what we see because in this case, we don't see that there are many things here behind this, this mesh. So here see that we have the wireframe and see that we have a hole here. Okay. So see here in this, in this one, for instance, we have a hole in the background and then also we have a hole in the component mesh the refinement zone. Okay. These holes are cut using walls. So whatever you have all the time, when you have a wall, that wall will cut a hole in your meshes. Okay. So all the meshes that you have below that level will, will be cut by, by, by that wall. So this is what it happens. Okay. Everything computed by, by, uh, the solver, the library automatically It's some good practices. See here that the change in size between this mesh and the other one is not very uniform. So it's, there is a good practice to, to have approximately same size. So in this case, this is a problem we we'll want to see later, but following some practices. So make probably making the domain bigger or changing the refinement ratio will improve sense. And this is the VLAC advantage that we have for with overhead mesh. So here see that we have two moving bodies. So this is something that you cannot deal using like the normal Laplacian smoothing. So see that every single step that interpolation is being computed. Okay. As you see, we have a very nice solution and see here that even you can have uh, overset patches that they intersect between each other. Okay. So there are a few rules that we need to follow, but I think there is just there. They are not that difficult. And in open form, when you see the salt types, see that here, when you see salt types, a value two means that there is a hole. You don't compute solution here. When you see cell type one, it's an interpolated cell. You compute the solution there. Okay. Uh, and you interpolate it from different levels. So here there is a lot of interpolation happening and then calculate it. You compute your solution, uh, about the order of the operations of when you are merging meshes in theory, it's not that important. Okay. So you can do the merging from the, for instance, in this case, you can merge from the background to the cylinder, from the re refinement cell zone to the other one. So it's not important when you merge. Okay. But usually it is highly recommended that the overset patch, when you see the boundary file, in your case, the overset patch next to be the first one that is a recommendation is not compulsory, but be careful about that. However, when it comes to zone ID, which is grid priority, that is important. And here we can understand better what, what is happening. So depending on this, the zone ID, you can, they're going to interpolate from levels. You are giving more priority to some levels. So as I told you before, you, it's a good practice that the background mesh has the lowest zone ID priority, meaning that they, it's going to receive all the information. Okay. So if you have one body, it's not a problem, but if you have multiple bodies it can be a little bit tricky. Okay. Even if you use commercial software, like the choices of how you put your, your meshes, components in the priority, that is something that is manual and can be tricky. So it's not as easy as we might think. Uh, well, this is the, the workflow. You see here that we saw the stat, but basically generate merge component mesh meshes defined were said uh, patches assign priorities. Then you just set up your numerics. Remember that you need to set up some interpolation in your dictionaries and then everything here is done by the solver. At the end, you do the post-processing post-processing. It is a little bit tedious. Okay. It's not easy because you have different meshes. So you need to play with the filters, but it's the same idea as doing normal post-processing. So let me go and talk about, uh, show you a few applications. So this is the first application, the cylinder, famous cylinder to Reynolds 200 and see here that we have different setups. So we go from the single body fitted mesh. Okay. No overlapping mesh to our overset mesh where we have uniform background mesh and see here, here it's not clear to see, but the ratio between cells dimension is not uniform. So the cells close to the cylinder are much, much smaller, smaller than the background. So there will be some interpolation problems. Then here we managed to solve this problem by just adding a stretching. And here we add three component meshes. See that we have the refinement region. So as the previous 
case. So here we have different solutions. We compare and see that probably the worst one, this one, the blue line that you see here, just correspond to the uniform background mesh, this one. As you can see, this is usually, it's normal CFD, you know that the cell size will increase your accuracy. So if you have different cell size there, that will introduce a lot of diffusion that you see here. But then the other two cases, okay, see that we have relative good uh, matching between this one and these two, okay? We see drag and lift. Same period frequency, there will be differences. We know that there are so interpolation, but as you see that following good standard practices, we managed to get a good agreement. Regarding timing, overset meshes are more and more time consuming. So probably these cases take as twice as this one. So as you see, if you have a fixed body, I think there is no need to do it, but if you have multiple modular bodies, yes, there probably can be very helpful to have uh, overset meshes. So to show you some results, so we have here two case, three cases. So see the one in the bottom, the three component meshes. Even if we have a good quantitative, uh, uh, quantitative disagreement, look at when we look at the fields, we have this problem. And this is what I was telling you about the interpolation. See that here, the interpolation with the, from the refinement to the background is not very good, okay? The ratio between cells is two. So it's much better to have something smaller, like 1.2, the one that we use for boundary layers. And you can see clearly that here in the interpolation. But what is measured on the body is a very good. And then we see the other two cases that here we don't see that diffusion, okay? So half in mind also setting overhead meshes, also there is some know-how behind that, okay? It's not like you start to put different patches and interpolate, okay? You need to have a good agreement between cell size, order of priority between meshes and so on. Another application, for instance, I work a lot in uh, flapping winds, okay? But I was using another approach, not open phone for that 10, open phone it was, let's say it was in 2006, uh, didn't exist or it wasn't that advanced over set meshes didn't exist. So I was using another approach and see here, this is done with, by the way, this is done with open front. So here using a snapping X mesh here, this is done using ANSYS mesh. As you see, you can take that, those meshes from different meshes. It doesn't matter. And also it doesn't, you don't need to have set, same cell type. So see here, quads, triangles, all quads, and you can put general polyhedras in two and three D. Okay, so as you see, doing this one probably with your platform is moving. It's not a good idea. It can be done, but it will be some, you will encounter some quality issues. So here, yes, it's useful to work to use uh, overset meshes. Another case is this is a very nice one. This is uh, vortex induced vibration to side cylinder. So here we're not imposing the motion like in the previous case. This is the bodies are just reacting to the forces. Okay, so you see the vortex shedding and then they start to oscillate. So you define all the properties of the body, everything, and well, you get your output. So as you see, these are challenging problems as well. So if you try to use Laplace and smoothing, stuff like that, it's quite tricky. Overset meshes is very easy. So if you want to add another body, just take this one, translate it, or different geometry, just put it in, and start to, to compute the solution. As you see here, you see that the pressure field is oscillating. So that is stuff related to the interpolation. So usually it's a good idea as well that the overset patches, it is far from uh, a strong pressure gradients. In this case, we have a strong pressure gradient, so it may be, might be better to put that overset uh, uh, fringe interpolation patch farther away to avoid you now passing that strong gradient from one mesh to the other. But the solution is acceptable. Now, another case, I realize this case is a fallen and floating body, so we have the body beginning here, then it will basically can see better here. So this is what we're doing. So we're using different approaches. So, so here that we're using Laplacian smoothing, here the solver doesn't cross, but see that the quality of the cells here is really bad, okay? Even here you will have problems when you capture the, the surface. So here we're doing it exactly the same, okay? Single mesh, but we're doing remeshing, okay? So when the quality is low, remesh, interpolate. So probably this is the best approach, but it can be a little bit tedious. And here, overset, over, overset meshes. Generate you know, your two meshes and let it go. So as you see from a qualitative point of view, very similar, very nice solutions, okay? 
but also we can measure <clears throat> the the actual values angle displacement and see here that we have some differences but we have pretty much same be behaviors okay so this is good okay uh probably the best solution correspond to the one where we are doing remeshing which would be this case but it's because here in the overset mesh as, as you see here the difference between cells okay is large so probably might be better to have finer background mesh or also component mesh around the body but similar behaviors very efficient also by the way here this case is computing time is similar okay in this case there is not big difference all of three have similar computing times and then a little bit more elaborated so we have a same two body so it's no problem as you can see you can put many bodies so this is where overset are very very useful multiple bodies undergoing relative motion okay so those are basic application by the way these tutorials these cases i'm sharing okay so you can download that those from our website so a few guidelines when we work with overset mission so just to wrap it up so Remember that in overset meshes, as I saw you, cell size close to patches should be similar to minimize interpolation error. So avoid to have those refinement ratios two to one. This is dangerous because as you know, uh, for instance, you use a snappy X mesh, you know that the refinement there is of three structures. So you have one cell divided into four, that cell is divided then and so, and so on. So be careful because those refinement ratios and snappies, they are not good. So it's better to have a very smooth transition. Also, when you have multiple walls, okay, it's a good idea to have at least four cells between both bo uh, walls and also patches, uh, overset patches, okay? It's not like you go from the wall right away to overset patch, that is dangerous. So you need to add at least four cells and as you can put more, it's even better. Uh, also, it's a good practice to m monitor the mesh current number. This is not the flow, okay? So you can you have flow and mesh. We know that here, usually when you wear overset meshes, scenes are moving, so it's a good idea. Monitor that one, and that one will be the restrictive one. And try to keep it, to keep it below one. So when you're working with overset meshes, you will have this option. Monitor also the mesh current number. And keep it below one just for good accuracy. Okay, and then when the body's moving, try to choose a time step in such a way that you have a sequential change, okay? When the cells are changing from block to interpolated to calculated, it have to be sequential, okay? If you don't have that sequ sequential change, you might encounter problems because you will have orphan cells, cells from where you cannot interpolate the solution. But to uh, sort it out these problems, the thing is keeping CFL below one, okay? So remember, bodies are moving, so if you want good accuracy, keep CFL below one. Uh, well, the same stuff. Now also again with the flow CFL number, try to keep it below one. Also to avoid those jumps in pressure due to instantaneous accelerations of the flow and so on. Uh, use a robust and accurate interpolation method. Okay, so there are many implemented in OpenFun, but we recommend the least square. Okay, it's a very good choice, but they, they have many. Well, you have four implemented. We tested least square. It's a very good one. Uh, also place the overset interface appropriately. Remember when we saw that diffusion in the overset patches, this means that you need to put those overset patches far from where you have strong gradients. And in particular, pressure gradient is important, but also velocity. Um, with pressure no, uh, gradient, there is a problem in the interpolation, this ratio interpolation. So that's why we want to put it a little bit far, far away. Uh, Something that particular to open phone, the overset regions cannot exit background mesh. Okay, so is that body hits a, a, a background mesh, one of the patches, you will have an error. Okay, so be careful about that. Also, you are not allowed to have collisions, but there are some other software libraries that you can do that one. For instance, I use Overture. Overture, you can manage collisions with, with no problem. And also Greek priorities is important. Okay, so also be careful that the background needs to be the lowest Greek priority, so ID zero. But then when you are designing your case, dependence, you have multiple bodies, you need to give different priorities levels. So you need to uh, design that. So just to conclude, uh, thanks to, to, to the use of overset meshes, a wide range of applications that previously were extremely difficult or even impossible to simulate. Okay, now we can do it, okay, by using uh, overset meshes. So since social 
prescribed motion, six degrees of freedom, fluid structures that are undergoing large displacements, both multiple and single bodies now can be dealt with, uh, carry out, those simulations can be carried out in an efficient way, okay? So this is important, as you see, and just stressing a lot that use overset meshes when you have moving bodies. It makes no sense using overset meshes with uh, steady body, fixed bodies. Uh, also, there can be helpful to do parametrical studies. I can argue this, but I, 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 it's true. So you have, if you are changing the geometry, like adding new bodies, yeah, it can be really helpful, but I don't like to do it. I just do it for moving bodies. Uh, it's not a silver bullet, I have been telling you as well. So the simulations using uh, overset measures requ require planning and also some knowledge because there are many small details that you need to be aware of. Uh, current state of overset meshes in open phone, particu particularly speaking in this about this version, it is working. You can use it with inducer cases. We have used it. However, it can be improved, but yes, it is working. So I think with that, I conclude. So here, well, you have a few links. So if you are interested, you can go to our GitHub link here. We share this presentation. You can download the cases that we show, but also in YouTube, we have a couple of tutorials, so you can follow there and we compare with Fluent and you can see the differences. So thank you very much. And well, I hope I was on time. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Joel. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, there's one. Yes. I didn't hear one that. Can you just? I can repeat the question. I... Can you repeat that again? Yes. So, could you use that in a project tile? inside a tube or, or will the ball collision will be an issue with that? Excuse me, if I can use it in a... In a projectile in a tube, right? Yes. Yeah, I would say is that is, is if yeah, yeah, you can use it. If you have collision with walls, be careful that there is a point where it will crash. So, but yeah, you can you can use it with no problem. And also, I recommend is since are moving. If they are not moving, it makes no sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think we have one more minute for one question. Anyone else? Like you're doing something that a dynamic meshing can also do, right? Yeah. So what's the difference? Like, this is better or? Excuse me, uh, can, I didn't hear the... the what is the dynamic, dynamic meshing or yeah. the overset meshes? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, that, that is honestly, for instance, that one can be seen here, like here we have dynamic meshes where we are not interpolating. So honestly, I prefer to use this approach. See that you have your mesh, then in one point when the quality is low, you remesh. See here that boom, you remesh. So probably this is the best approach because you are here when you remesh, you interpolate, but you interpolate just one time. Here, you are always interpolating and that interpolation is non-conservative. You need to be careful, but this can be tedious. For instance, in this case, it's easy to set up, but if you have many bodies, that is easy, that is difficult to, to do. But yeah, perfectly, you can use overset meshes, but be, be careful, follow good standard practices, okay? Thank you, Joel. Okay. Applause, please. Joel. Thank you. Uh, Joel, I have to turn off this uh, meeting and I will open a new one. Okay. The, the one for, um, what is the name of the next one? The uh, cloud based cat parametrization. parametrization. Yeah. I'm going to start that one. Yeah, so sure. you can log in that one. Okay, you send me right, the mail now. I, I think I sent you a link or. Yes. No, let's do this. So it's better. Uh, I'm going to create a new one and then you can log in to that one. Okay, sure. Yes. Okay, wait I'm for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.